videos we built up to a bit of a story going on which has to do with a cat with black hair and a purple mustache shooting a basketball that has a happy face on it and you can see once again if I click on the green flag you see everything happen but if we want to continue on our story let me continue the story then by making the basketball come back down into the cat's hands but only in a particularly clever way which I think you'll find useful if in your own coding you have more than one sprite running and you'd like them to sort of interact with each other so if I go over here to control, or pardon me, events, you can see in the events here, there's these bottom three blocks here, kind of interesting. It says, this one here says broadcast message one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to the cat's code and in this long tower of code, I know that when the code gets down to here, the cat is back at its starting position, right? Because this first block here make, carries the cat out. Then we hear the meow sound. This code carries the cat back. So what I'll do is when the cat makes it back, I'm going to connect this puzzle piece to it. I'm going to say broadcast, and I'll click this little drop-down arrow here, and the new message I want to say is I'm back. This can be anything at all, any sentence, any name. I'm just going to call it I'm back. And so what the cat will do is when it gets back to its starting position, it's going to broadcast the message I'm back. So what is that useful for? Well, that broadcast block doesn't make the cat say I'm back. I'm back doesn't appear on the screen or anything like that. It's sort of a low-level internal message that's piped around into the logic of Scratch. And so what I can do is, okay, so the cat's going to broadcast the message, I'm back. Now, if I go over to the basketball again, I'm going to leave all of this intact here because, remember, this code is what makes the basketball shoot up into the hoop. But what I can also do is grab this thing, this block that says, when I receive, and again, the message is, is I'm back, I can create a new message or just select the one, I'm back. I'm back is already selected. So when that message is received, let's go to motion of the basketball here. I want to glide down to, and I have some XY coordinates in there, but what I'd like to do is say, well, what do I, where would I have to glide the basketball down to to get it back into the cat's hands? Well, if I pick up the basketball and drag it, looks like the XY coordinates are 51 minus 113 for X and Y. So I'll put a 51 over here and a minus 113 in for here. And if I do that then, I hope you can see what logic is going on. Let me trace it with you, then we'll hit go. You can see that the cat does its normal thing we've been doing, having it do, walk out and come back. But when it's done, we added this last block here that says, hey, broadcast this internal message to all sprites that may be listening, I'm back. Broadcast that out to them. If I go to the basketball's code, the basketball is certainly gonna shoot up into the basket when the green flag is clicked, but only when it receives the message, I'm back. Again, that secret internal messaging that Scratch has built into it. Only when the cat sends out this message, I'm back, do we want the basketball to glide down to X coordinate 51, Y coordinate minus 113, which are in the cat's hands again. And maybe we'll slow it down to say maybe do that over the course of three seconds. So let's run it now and see what we get. There's the shot. Now the cat goes back. And only when it gets back does the basketball drift back down into the cat's hands. So try to remember this as you work on your project. You might want more than one sprite sort of talking or interacting with each other in the code here. This broadcast and receive blocks, those blo broadcast and receive blocks are very useful in that regard.